The following is a presentation of TFNN. Time to talk about your health. Living a primal lifestyle. Yeah, we have Tom on, from Tampa on the phone. Hey, Tom. Good morning. It's bright and early now, huh? Hey, thanks. Good. Hi, Tom. How you guys doing, Nico? Good. Great. Good. Hey, um, your new player's outstanding, man. I'm, I'm telling you, man, it is outstanding. And so is the run my leg. I love that stuff. I'd never be without it. I mean, I've been on it now three, four months, man. I mean, it's just I can't get over how good I feel. Primal Edge is, uh, no, people are raving about it. People who are trying it, they know because you can feel it. We'd not be without it. Call now. Toll free at one 877 6648 Now your hosts, Nico DeHaan and Paige Clark. Good morning. I'm Nico DeHaan, and welcome to Living a Primal Lifestyle, where we explore a return to a more balanced and natural wild world. That's right, Nico, to recover our natural health and regain our rights and freedoms. Good morning. I'm and, Paige Clark. Yes, and it's a beautiful morning in uh, downtown St. Petersburg. 81 degrees, a little muggy, but it is August, so we don't mind too much. And that's especially right. I leave for Tahoe. Next on, week? No, th on Wednesday this week. Oh, good. And um, so I'm looking forward to beautiful weather, sunny days, and get out of this muggy That would be very nice. And make sure you pick up our Primal Edge newsletter. Uh, this gets into your health signals twice newsletter. Month. Yep. Yeah, yes, our health signals <laughs> newsletter <laughs> about the primal living. And uh, we, we kind of follow the show, and you'll get uh, clickable links to information you can use to stay healthier. That's right, and pick up the Primal Edge also, our uh, ancestral co comprehensive daily nutrition. Mm -hmm. And it's all filled with all good stuff that uh, you actually really need. And uh, the reason you need it is because our food is kind of in inadequate these yeah. days. And we're going to talk about our food, yes, diets today a little bit, yeah. kind of take a regroup. So on pick up what's the Primal Edge and make sure that you get the nutrition you need to stay healthy. That's right. And it's only $89 every single month. And uh, we're going to be talking about. Uh, not this, but... Uh, well, I think you wanted to start with how the brain senses glucose and yeah. why a lot of people did choose to, to follow a paleo or primal diet. We'll also kind of highlight sure some of the newer diets you're hearing that are variations <coughs> thereof, perhaps the carnivore diet you've heard of mm -hmm. or, or even the keto diet. And, and what about some, you know, what is the right amount of carbs or, or are they? And are we eating the wrong kinds and what are the right kinds? We're going to just kind of do a dusting of all this today. Well, I think if we follow the seasons and you follow uh, people around the globe, uh, people in the real Arctic regions are going to be eating a lot different than people in the uh, temperate zones and mm -hmm. also people in uh, around the equator. You're it's gonna like be, Jack Cruz says, the zip code and chronobiology. Yeah, because... All the sun and your zip code. That's right. So if you're uh, on an island someplace in the Caribbean, uh, you've got uh, a limited amount of animals. So now you have to substitute, and because it's warm out, uh, things are a lot different, the sun is out a lot more, uh, you're going to need carbs for that. And natural carbs are uh, where the fruit comes from and where the vegetables and things like that. If they're naturally grown and seasonal, I don't see a problem with carbs at all. But I let's talk about the brain. I think that's important, the seasonality, what you just yeah. said. And uh, I like to talk about the brain because there's a little bit of confusion. You know, we always uh, say that uh, in, in conventional ways, we think that the carbs are our primary fuel source. When we kind of learn now that our primary source of fuel really is fat, but the brain does have the need for the sucrose. Right. And yeah. the key thing is the body has the ability to make it, and we can get it from our food. Yeah. And everyone probably has a little different balance of where they feel their best. Mm -hmm. And also when you take that into consideration, as you said, where they live yeah. and the time of year and the time of day, you're probably going to get the best bet. Yeah. Let's so talk a little bit about this. So when it comes to brain fuel, glucose is king. Glucose mm -hmm. is the brain's primary source of fuel and is narrowly regulated inside the body as a result. So this is uh, uh, termed uh, glucose. Uh, homostasis. Right. And there are two key, uh, key players in this, which is insulin and glycogen. And these two hormones are kept in balance so that our blood remains stable. So when we eat, the ratio of insulin to glucose is high, uh, which You're helps... You're talking about glucagon, you mean, actually. Uh, glucagon. Yes, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Yeah, insulin, insulin and glucagon. glucagon. Yeah. And the ratio of insulin to glucagon is high, and it helps to facilitate a lot of the processes in the body yeah. after you eat. Mm -hmm. So the standard American diet is very high in glucose, which means it's high in carbohydrates like bread, pasta, baked goods, and juices. And let's, let's preface that. It's high because we have uh, a market of fake food. Manufactured food, Manufactured fake food. food. Yeah, and it food produces probably... produces a lot of money. 
probably in uh, the evolution of man, it probably played a very, very small role, except the last 150, 200 years. Now, yeah. I, you know, I want to preface this because the food that saves your life becomes very, very important. And during hard times, this is what we always go to because it's the only thing left. It's the only thing that we can store. We call it starvation foods, you taught me. Yes. And uh, that's interesting because I just saw, it uh, came across my thing yesterday when I was doing something else that uh, Dave Devine, I guess, came out with a, a, a yes. video about the rising prices of, of food in China due to... And the weather. rising prices and the smaller containers. Mm -hmm. And that's what's going on here in the United States. If you look at your vegetables and things like that, that is also going on here. Very stealthy. There's nothing in the news saying, hey, we've got a shortage of this right. or that. But we do not have a shortage of sucrose, uh, uh, fructose. Mm -hmm. Things like that. We don't have a shortage okay. of that because we, uh, we have beets and we have uh, corn and we have lots of things that we can extrude the sugars out of. So let's go on with this. Well, let's talk about how the body manages glucose. Okay. So, uh, the nuts and bolts of how our brain actually handles glucose. It's, it's kind of fascinating and to really explain it's kind of complicated situation, but it's best to describe the, ver the various different metabolic states which bring about different activities in the body and the brain. Yeah. And so, for example, when we lack carbohydrates, our liver glycogen stores are, are, are uh, rapidly used and fatty acids go out into our bloodstream and are then shuttled from the stored fat. Right. Uh, so we've got lots of energy on our body, some of us more than others, <laughs> uh, to provide energy view we call it oxidation. Yeah, so the, what this Fatty doing, acid oxidation. Yeah, so the fat is actually, the stored fat is being con, uh, converted because you're, now your brain needs it. And this is a natural process, but I do remember 15, 20 years ago when my wife and I were traveling that uh, a couple hours after we eat, the sugar drops and all of a sudden you, you're looking for food mm -hmm. and you're on a highway, not much around, especially if you're out in the backwoods and stuff. And when that sugar really drops and your brain goes, duh, I'm starving, I need something. And you, you start snapping at your sibling or your mm -hmm. wife or something, you get very cranky. So this is because we've been using sucrose as our main fuel. Our brain can get this fuel from many different sources. So this fatty acid oxidation is actually allows us to survive on a limited food supply. Right. And this was probably the mechanism that helped us keep from starving uh, when there were times of scarcity. But yeah. how does that work for us today with food everywhere? Not so great. So think of glucose as the backup fuel system. Our body knows when one fuel is running low or not available and switches to another supply. Taken to extreme, when carbohydrates are low enough, for long enough, we go into ketosis. Mm -hmm. The keto flu is something that you get because you're not used to it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's very hard to switch over. So on the flip side, if you have plenty of carbohydrates, our bodies will choose to store fat and rely on glucose for fuel since our ability to store carbohydrates is really not existence pretty yeah, much right we actually store carbohydrates as fat yeah well the other way to store it is there's some carbohydrates around the muscle stored not mm -hmm. as fat but as the but as unless the sugar. you're like a super and, athlete you're not really gonna well you, unless you're on a, a type of primal diet you're not going to have access to that mm -hmm. uh, that's for sure all right well we're going to dive down into this a little farther we'll be right back after this short break You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. Today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionics, oil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. 
TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Directions Daily S&P 500 Bull and Bear Leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And so uh, before the break, we were talking that the carbohydrates uh, are, uh, when you eat plenty of carbohydrates, our bodies choose to store fat uh, and rely on glucose for fuel since the, our ability to store the carbohydrates is very limited just around our muscles normally. Mm -hmm. And this is why marathon uh, runners carb load. They want to mac maximize the store. But we're finding a lot of differences in this because when you're on a high carb diet, you need to have more carbs and this is how you store them overnight so you're eating pancakes uh, the night before and you have a lot of that in there and then when you're running your body really hasn't converted at all to fat yet uh, and uh, you, you're using the fuel for the whole run but that's much. the problem there are a lot that's of people eating problem. pancakes that aren't going for a run right uh, and the other thing is yeah and that's for sure but the other thing is and now we're finding out if you're really more on a keto type of uh, high fat diet that you really didn't, don't need to carb load because your carbohydrates aren't being burned. They're still stored around your muscles. So you're running on that fuel all the time, and if you have to go a little faster, that's when those carbs come kicking uh -huh. in. So you have that extra energy. So it's really kind of a backwards thing that you're talking about here. Uh, the carb loading is not really necessary unless you're eating a high-carb diet, and that's the, kind of the way I see it. Yeah, well, that's a good way to clarify it. If you're a carb burner, then you're going to need them. Yeah. Perform, and but what if you've already gotten fat adapted. Yeah, and this is why we have that 20 mile wall that they say in a, in a marathon. Because by the time, even if you carb load, by the time 20 miles comes around, you're not going to have the glucose in there. So in your body, if your ability to get to the stored fat, fine. And maybe after 20 miles you can, mm -hmm. but you're not going to feel good doing it. That's right. what I'm saying. And that's why it's usually crappy that last six miles. For me, it took me an hour. The I, last never, six I never ever did a marathon, yeah, so well, don't kudos do it. to you. So the standard American diet is very high in glucose, meaning it's high in carbs like bread and pasta and juices and all things. So while glucose is the king of the brain and the body fuel, we also have the ability to, to uh, fuel our brains with ketone bodies, which is why the low-carb diets are currently very, very popular. And, but the, there's people that question what the balance actually is. There sure. are a lot of people that are thriving on the paleo diet, and there are a lot of people that are doing well with keto mm -hmm. and the carnivore diet, which we might touch on a little bit. 
and then there's people that aren't. Yeah, and I think it has to do with what you did before that makes the big difference. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you were raised in France, southern France, or the Mediterranean area, and you're eating local there, mm -hmm. you're eating much more carbs than I would be eating, but you're probably very balanced because you're eating vegetables, probably a lot of different types of vegetables that we don't even get in the United States. Most of the plants here come from one or two different plants. Yeah, and they're true. really high in, in sugars. However, the that's French, the the French are known for, the French paradox is mm -hmm. really their, their high fat intake. Yes. Yet, they also have pretty much a neutral diet in terms of car carbs, about 45%. That's really the key. 45%. Yeah, so if you're under the 50% and you're eating these carbs that are not manufactured, it's a whole different story. Mm -hmm. And this is why people are successful on the paleo diet, because they've had a crappy diet, and now they're going into something that is completely different, changing their body. Uh, it's not really not necessary to uh, diminish the carbs that much, as long as we really have to understand where these carbs carbs come from. If you're getting them from wild plants or, or domesticated plants that aren't overly sugarized, mm -hmm. if you're eating fruits that are more fruit that isn't so fruity and, you know, I mean, the apples of today are nothing like 200 years ago when Johnny Appleseed came and started. Yeah, they were tart little apples, like yes. crab apples, you said. Yeah, crab apples. So, uh, and then you'll see that some of the standard fruit, mm -hmm. not the organic fruit, the apples will be like this big. Huge. And then an organic apple will be like this. And then, like you said, the original apple was probably like a little crab apple. Yeah. But let's wrap this one up and then kind of go on to some of these other great things that you put in here. Mm -hmm. It says, you know, interestingly, research has also shown a direct link between too much sugar, specifically fructose, and premature aging. Now, I want to say, is it really the fructose or is it the rancid oils that are often part of I that diet? I think probably both of them, those. Yeah. I think so, too. Yeah. And other studies have shown that too much glucose can be linked to cognitive decline and memory issues. We call that Alz Alzheimer's or perhaps what we might actually refer to as diabetes type 3. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. so these are often cited when we hear articles that say sugar can kill us or sugar can cause Alz Alzheimer's. And the truth is... Is it really actually sugar, or is it actually these artificial sugars like the high fructose corn syrup that are high in fructose that our bodies are not meant to handle? Either way, glucose sensing mm -hmm. is the brain, in the brain is critically important, and the paleo diet will help keep glucose levels at normal, healthy levels, and it leads to a much better brain health and a healthier life overall. And this is what these researchers are citing. Uh, in this article, and I think that for the most part that's panning out to be true. Yeah, it's the real devil in the details, and the devil is the fructose, uh, you know, it, and the reason it's so bad is because this is what the manufacturers of the food are uh, industry is really using more and more of this because, first of all, it's about a hundred times more per ounce uh, sweeter. Right. So, so now you've got something that you have to use less of Mm -hmm. uh, and it's the part that really goes to our body and says red flag right away. I mean, if you take a spoon full of sugar, you, the red flag may not go up for you. Right. But if you're going to start eating cereals, using these oils, which mm -hmm. also are a huge problem because they block a lot of these sensory receptors that we have they for the, do. For the mm -hmm. glucose and for the fat. So here we're dulling our body not to get, you know, so you're not as sens sensitive to these things. So you don't realize what's going on, and pretty soon, a year or two down the road, you've got 20, 30, 40 pounds. And I have this picture. I'll try to bring it up later. It's a picture that uh, my wife found on Facebook, and it's uh, these people walking in 1955 on the beach. Mm-hmm. And my God, everybody's thin. Right. Everybody. Right. I mean, you didn't see a fat person at all. It's kind of what you. It's kind of the same thing that you see in the malls see in Europe. Oh, in Europe, yeah. You see a lot less heavy people. Yeah, and that's really because the uh, Europeans are still eating from the ground. But a lot of them have coffee and cake at three o'clock in the afternoon. That's fine, but you know, if you start your day right, right. and you're on it for a long time, your body pretty much is going to take care of you. I you know, this is a fabulous system we have here. We just have to feed it the right way, exactly. and the right way is the wild way. But we've domesticated a lot of good things also. Well, that's that's very interesting that you said that the wild way because it was really when they started talking about. I like to read old doctor books. You know, doctors around the turn. And when I say turn of the century, yeah. Uh, before, old for us. Yeah, old <laughs> for us. But a lot of them talk about the diseases of consumption. Mm -hmm. 
and and really what consumption was was the rich man's diet uh, the processed Breads. pastries yeah. and yeah. cookies and cakes and exactly. and these kind of things that were uh, taking it probably way too much alcohol, et cetera. So, well, another thing is too. You know, we have this big thing in the news now about the Amazon burning, and the reason the Amazon's burning because it's farming. Farming has taken the land in a different direction, and now the winds have changed, the moisture has changed, and there's not much. I mean, the rainforest uh, soil really is not great soil. So now you have to enrich the soil when you're yeah. farming, or maybe they're grazing. And that's why I always say we have to turn all these fields that we plowed for years and years into wild areas so the... Nature can take care of it. Exactly. And let because, nature take care of yeah, it. Yeah, you know, read the Bible, folks. It says everything's here for us. All we have to do is go out and pick it, yeah. not make it. Exactly. Okay, we'll be right back. Uh, enough tangents here. But during the break, please pick up our Health Signals newsletter and also our Primal Edge. And we're going to talk to you real quick about the history of the forbidden fruit. Don't you want to know what that, that is? Yes. Talking about the Bible. Mm -hmm. Be right back. We'd like to tell you about the personal training studio that Nico is the owner and president of, Performance Training. Since 1998, Nico has trained individuals and groups to improve their health both mentally and physically. As a certified personal trainer, Nico's main focus is on demonstrating exercises correctly to avoid injury and teaching his clients how to manage their past injuries while getting the most out of their personal training sessions. The Performance Training Studio is filled with unique training equipment that enhances balanced results at a faster rate while minimizing damage and discomfort. For more information, you can give Nico a call at 727-418-8740 or email him at nico at tfnn.com. Let him know you heard him on TFNN and save up to $100 on a special package just for TFNN listeners. Act today. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. <laughs> back uh, to what we were talking about let's share a little information with you about the history of the forbidden fruit <laughs> and I think we all have this perception that it's the big apple here and really no fruit pops up in Western art or literature or history or everyday speech as the apple we talk about the apple started the Trojan War uh, uh, Odysseus 
later struggling to get home from it, yearns from the, from the garden he had as a child he, that had apple trees. And the Norse gods owed their immortality to the apples. But, you know, we've heard about the apple and uh, the Arabian Nights featured a magic apple. It was capable of curing all kinds of diseases. But really the truth is when we think of the forbidden apple, what do we think of? Well, we think of the uh, Adam and Eve story, naturally, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. uh, we don't even know if that was an apple. It might have been a fig, although apples, uh, that's where they were originally from. Central Asia is where the apple was born, and from there, uh, you know, it went to Europe and England. But actually, and, no one really knows if the Garden of Eden was actually there, or if it was in Turkey, or even Ohio. Or even the uh, Antarctica. Who right, knows? right, yeah, so right. So it doesn't really make that much difference. But the reason the apple was uh, always uh, in there, because it's one of the few things that helps with digestion. I think, mm -hmm. especially the sour apple. Mm -hmm. Really, you know, when you think of pickles and you think of uh, olives and, uh, you know, things like that, this is what helps digestion. And my wife for years always ate an apple a day just because it helped her with uh, her digestion. Well, the other thing about it is, mm -hmm. is to eat the seed too, or at least one or two of them because mm -hmm. it does have some, some poisons in the seed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Chew the right. seed that actually can be anti-parasitic and so forth. Yeah, and uh, actually if you just swallow the seeds, they come out whole on the other end and you have the fertilizer right there. Uh, yeah, there you, go. there you go. But the apple as a forbidden fruit seems to actually have appeared in Western Europe around the 12th century. And some researchers suggest that the apple got a bad rap for an unfortunate pun. Uh, the word Latin, the word Latin, uh, the malice is the word means both apple and evil, evil yeah. okay, malice, which may have given early Christians uh, ideas. Yeah. Evil, you know, the, the word meant the same thing. And a 1504 engraving by Albrecht Durer shows Adam and Eve with apples, and a 16th century painting by Lucas Cranach and Titian show Adam and Eve under particularly tempting apple trees. So even though Michelangelo's Temptation and Fall, which was painted on the top of the Sistine Chapel, uh, features forbidden figs, apples, and increasingly uh, the apple was held responsible for the fall. Well, at least it puts a, t uh, a place uh, when Adam and Eve were looking at that tree. We know it was probably late summer, early fall. Just right. as a query, because that's when apples would uh, bloom. Mm -hmm. Or figs. Yeah. And if you, if you look at indigenous fruit, fruit from your area, and apples are, are not from North or South America at all, but if you're looking at these things, they pop up at certain times of the year when your body really kind of needs them. Mm -hmm. So if you're eating from the land, then these things, if you've ever seen videos of a bear going through a bush of uh, blueberries or an apple tree, they ate the whole thing. They don't leave one yeah, there right. because that's what uh, these kind of carbs do to us. Mm -hmm. The sour one, probably not as much, but of course the bear needs the nutrition to be stored as fat which the fruit does nicely so it can live through the winter and hibernate. Well, the other reason, and if you really want to apply the science to it, mm -hmm. uh, those berries go well when we're on more of a fat-burning diet because as we release the fatty acids we talked about in the first segment, yep. the fatty acid oxidation creates mm -hmm. free radicals. Yep. So we need the antioxidants to help protect us when we're burning fat. Fat burning can be... Uh, especially if you've got the wrong kinds of fats, if you're eating trans fats or too many polyunsaturated fats that produce a lot of free radicals and re re Another thing that I was thinking of too is naturally that bear or whatever animal is eating the fruit to get the hibernation uh, very successful. Uh, they're just going non-stop. Your body can't stop eating and we see a lot of that mm -hmm. with, with the carbs. So it probably won't happen with an apple, but when you take it as a manufactured food and you make it as bread and cake and cookies and candies and all these things, then you really can't stop because every one of us has uh, sat in front of the TV with a bag of chips or a bag of uh, uh, jujubes or even some ice cream and ate the whole thing. We've all done that. And we know while we're doing it, well, it's just this one time, you know, I mean, I've done it in the past too. So the nice thing is now it doesn't happen to me. Yeah, so exactly. And that's great. So, so let's go kind of the opposite side. You know, at the same time that we're hearing about paleo and, and a diet and, and the keto diet, we're also learning that the paleo diet rage kind of peaked in 2014-15, and mm -hmm. although people are enjoying this diet and lifestyle, there's always something new. And why is there always something new? Because there's agendas. There's either food 
selling food agendas, mm -hmm. or maybe there's an even bigger agenda. Maybe we know that high carbohydrate diets are the foodstuffs of starvation or of times when things are not as plentiful. Nico mentioned that we've already seen evidence that that food packaging is getting smaller. And it's so funny, I noticed that, you know, the bagged lettuce, I was looking and I said, look at those bags, they're kind of small. That's but that's why it's happening. You know, they're making everything smaller, smaller for yeah. sure. And, and really, there, there's a nice little scam going on. We're making packages. This is just the right size for you. Uh -huh. Before we we realized now it was too much in the thing. So now we're making it. Oh, they've got a story for it. Yeah, yeah. they've got a story for but it. But we're going to talk about these next couple articles that Nico and I were dissecting here. Whole food CEO on plant-based meat boom. Remember how we talked about on the other show about how uh, we're coming up with all these plant-based Franken meats, you know, that look like meat, taste like meat. Well, why don't you just eat meat? But but they're making all these plant-based meats. And, we, and they want it to taste like meat. That's going to be that's very important for some reason. And here in this article, CNBC, uh, uh, the Whole Foods CEO on plant-based meat, he says it's good for the environment, but not for your health. Well, kudos to him for coming out and saying it. But first of all, you know, perhaps well, he's selling it, right? Yeah, but perhaps let's stop and think about this. You know, the whole push of the environment, you and I have shared the information that actually more animal foods are better for the environment. When we clear the land to grow plant-based foods, we're, we're really disrupting the ecology and interfering with the environment and the planet. It ain't natural, planet. folks. It ain't natural. It's not natural. It really isn't. No. So I just thought this was interesting. You know, uh, at least he's coming out and giving us a bit of truth why he's marketing something that's false. <laughs> Well, it's true, and Google is uh, also in play. Uh, you know, uh, now they, the head of Google was saying the other day, is we want to have the search engine so good that when you put a query in, there's going to be one truth. There's going to be one right answer. One right I answer. I know, I saw that. Well, I think we... And he's going to choose the right answer, I apparently. I think we're going to see that Google's going to be in a little bit of trouble coming up Maybe. pretty soon. Maybe. Well, Facebook, all these, all these oh, things yeah. are just Oh, you know, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. But anyways, in 2013, Whole Foods gave plant-based meat startup Beyond Meats. We talked about this a couple of shows ago. It's first shot at selling its vegan chicken strips at Whole Foods <laughs> located across the country. Early believers and investors in the products were billionaires Bill Gates and Twitter co-founder Biz Stone. Well, what, we do, what do we know about Bill Gates? He likes to get involved in, in the things that help to... Vaccines, all these things. He's part of the eugenics yeah. push, of, you know, as he said. There's also a push of uh, people pushing back saying that you can't use, you know, of meat as a non-meat product so you even if you're calling it beyond meat then you're really saying well it's still meat but it's beyond it I mean you, you really shouldn't be allowed to use meat as you know the bo bulk of burgers and things like that it's not really a burger well saying that both of these uh, beyond meat and impossible foods another company that's mm -hmm. producing these non-meat meats <laughs> uh, they both exploded actually but we're going to yeah. continue this when we get back and uh, Pick up some of our Primal Edge and get our newsletter and stay connected. Yeah, no fake food there, folks. Mm -hmm. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South 
African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term Term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. So welcome back. So we're on this uh, Whole Foods CEO, uh, plant-based meats boom, and he's uh, saying McKay is his name, who has been a vegan for more than 20 years, isn't sold on the health benefits of plant-based meats. He says the, brand, <laughs> the brands who uh, are capturing the imagination of the people, I'm not going to name these brands because I'm afraid I'll be associated with them, he says. But some of these are extremely popular now. They're taking the world by storm. If you look at the ingredients, they're, they're super, super highly funny. processed foods. And that's right. Yeah, so according kind of to, an oxymoron here. Yeah, he says, according to uh, Beyond Meat's website, ingredients for the plant-based uh, patties include water, pea, uh, protein, isolate, expeller, pressed canola oil, refined coconut oil, rice protein, and other flavors, including apple extract, beet juice, for coloring, things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, he says, I don't think that eating a highly processed food is healthy, and I think people thrive on e eating whole foods. Mm -hmm. And he says, as for health, I will not endorse that. And that is about as big of a criticism that I will do to the public on those products. Yeah. So really what, what we're seeing is, is that there's a reason that their people want easy. They want easy well, there's, to fix. There's a study here that, uh, by Beyond Meat uh, and the Center for Sustainable Systems. And they say a plant-based burger generates 90% uh, less greenhouse gas emissions. Of course, they're talking about cows farting in the pastures, which they don't really do. They do in the, the corn-fed uh, factories. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but then you have to take it whether or not you believe in all that greenhouse gas stuff anyways, which I believe Well, in. that's true, too. But, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, it's not pleasant smelling it, that's for darn sure. Mm -hmm. uh, he says a lot of people say that the plant-based meat is a transition food, meaning it's a way for people to re-educate themselves, re-educate their taste buds, so to speak. To move them over to yeah. a plant-based diet. Right, and that's the agenda here. Which, you know, speaking of that, let's go into 12 easy ways to eat a more plant-based diet. Um, you know, let's talk about what these people are recommending if you want to have a plant-based diet. And... If you're confused by the plant-based diet eating craze, you're not alone. While most people realize it's better for both our bodies and the environment, many are still unsure of exactly what it means. Let me just say that. Better for your body and the environment. How much of this diet dogma is, is based on guilt? How many people... Well, I guess a lot of it, but of course it can't be better for the planet because farming ruins the planet. Right. So there you go. <laughs> And so there's the factory farms for meat also. Right. So that we have uh, people on both sides right. are just saying, well, we need we... to meet in the middle. Yeah. And that's why I like a little bit of all of it. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> well, it makes a lot of sense, too. Yeah. So let's hop on the wagon here, and uh, they say the Zuli wagon is the thing you should do. Oh, and the these Zoodle are just wagon. Zoodles. Uh, yeah, instead of noodles. See, so this is basically an easy, easy way to transition, is what they're saying. Mm -hmm. And these are the foods that they're saying are, are going to help you. But I, I like that. I like a Zoodle, spiralizing zucchini or other vegetables to mimic noodles. I actually... I think that's okay. I mean, I like a, I, well, I like zucchini. Well, zucchini, first of all, is not a fruit. I know, it's, it's but not it, a vegetable. It's not a fruit. Uh, you know, it's it's just it's a crazy thing. It's mostly or squash. water. I, li I like butternut squash. It's kind of like a pasta. Yeah, but not as your main meal. No, of course not. Okay, well, that's yeah. what they're talking about mm -hmm. here. Swap your butter for oil. You know, this is you on this bad way. That's a scary one. It is a very scary one because butter or lard or tallow, the natural oils from animals, are the things that are very, very healthy This is for a us. very scary article. Yes, butter is sourced from animals, so switching it out for plant-derived options like coconut oil, avocado oil, or olive oil. Now, I will say those are three oils that are healthier. <laughs> yeah. Coconut oil, certainly, and the and nice thing about coconut oil, you can heat it. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. olive oil, not so much. You can heat a little bit of it when it's refined. Yeah. <clears throat> the third one is mimic your meat. Okay, this is what we were talking about in the last segment, of course. They want you to do this, and this is... That's you know, where there's the beyond guilt. meat. And this is the guilt mm -hmm. part that you were talking about. Well, yeah, not all meat substitutes are created equal. Many contain crazy ingredients you don't need or want to ingest, so choose wisely. Um, Number four. Mm -hmm. Upgrade your rice. Rice is already a plant-based option, but swapping in cauliflower rice gets you even closer to the plant source. I like cauliflower rice, I will say. I like cauliflower. It tastes all right, but I mean, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, regular rice has been working for thousands of years for the Chinese. They mm -hmm. use it the right way. Now, if you're going to say, okay, I'm going to uh, eat a whole plate of this, this is well, crazy. Well, to be, to be sure, though. Oh, no, well, I mean, maybe a whole plate, have it on the side, but you know, again, where's the protein? Yeah. Well, there you go. Uh -huh. Mushrooms are your friend. Here's where I agree with them. Number five. Uh -huh. Took them five to get there. Right. Mushrooms can provide the deep, earthy flavor um, that some ground meats provide. Um, also, mushrooms contain the light and I think are a good source of vitamin D. Well, <clears throat> mushrooms uh, and all these plant things out in the forest, this is where the medicine man gets his medicine. I've, so mm -hmm. these are really, really important for us. They're the things that uh, are so powerful. And th this is always my contention. We've dumbed down the vegetables. They used to be very powerful. Now they're just sh kind of sugar sticks. Because, again, the of the agriculture That's and right. the monocrop, and we're not yeah. rotating the soil, we're growing. Well, it, when you grow one thing, it doesn't have anything except pesticides to kind of just uh, strengthen itself, let's say, right. to a better product. If in the, you go into the forest, there's never huge fields. There's there's a small field here and there of certain things that grow, but that moves. Right. And we used to move with the food. Now we move with our job and our school. Right. It's a big, big difference. And the food comes to us. Yeah, which is Out crazy. of season, from all over the place. And, and, that, and, and eating have, a banana in the middle of a snowstorm, not because, a good idea. Because we're not getting... Uh, the exercise of going to get our food and moving with the food, uh -huh. now you have to come and see me to work out. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> you know, so that's a crazy system for sure. <laughs> hey, cut back on cheese, it says. If you're not ready to give up dairy cheese altogether, start out slow. Have you seen all those nut cheeses oh, and man, stuff I that people couldn't, made? I couldn't live without my Gouda cheese. I love my Gouda cheese. Well, you're Dutch and I'm Irish, so, you know, there I you love go. my cheese. But then again, make sure you're buying real cheese, yep. not cheese food stuffs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a lot of good cheeses on the market. And uh, I'll say that these are delicacies that we crave. Very important. And, and they're good so sources nice. of protein and fat. Yeah, and have it with your wine. It's perfect. Mm -hmm. Number Opt seven. Out for non-dairy milks. This oh, out for non-dairy milks. Yeah. Excuse me. Um, again, I'm concerned about people who think they're making a healthier choice by skewing dairy milk and going towards these nut milks. Many of these nut milks are highly processed and have immune suppressive ingredients such as Corrigian. And what is I, that? That's a preservative they put in. Oh. Look out on the label of a lot of mm -hmm. dairy products or so forth. And um, it can actually be an immune suppressive and creates a lot of autoimmunity. So. Um, if you're going to have your nuts, soak them or make, if you really feel like a nut milk was a good choice for you, again, high, yourself, high level yeah. of PUFAs, polyunsaturated fatty acids that rancidify and are not meant to have in high doses like that, uh, make it yourself. Don't buy it in the carton. Yeah. Uh, fry your veggies. 
Now, it depends what you're frying it in, that I would say that this might be a good idea. And certainly, when I learned macrobiotic cooking, they always cook their vegetables in, like, sesame oil or even butter and things like that. And So uh, they're trying them. to say, fry your veggies instead of having, um, uh, you know, fried French, I well, guess, when, something when else. I, when I think of frying, I think of... Uh, coating them with a powder of some kind uh -huh. and throwing them in deep fryer. I don't know if that uh, is what they're saying here. Well, I think what they're trying to say is have, instead of eating a lot of other fried foods, have it your veggies. I don't know no, that that really makes it any healthier, especially yeah. since most of them are being fried in soy yeah. oil. That's right. Yeah. Okay, Not number nine. Oops, um, oh, we got to take a break, so we'll have to hit the last ones when we come back. Oh, okay. Stick with us. Stick around, folks. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN has put together the best lineup of live content for traders by traders every market day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected minds in the business. TFNN broadcasts five days a week live from 9 a.m. until 5 p.m. Eastern Time. We have live programming every market day during market hours. Every morning, Larry Pesavento kicks off the trading day live at 9 a.m. and breaks down the opening bell with Trade What You See. At 10 a.m., Tom and Tommy O'Brien host the TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour, followed at 11 a.m. by the team at TD Ameritrade and Thinkorswim with Fast Market. Basil Chapman hosts the Tiger Technicians Hour at noon, Steve Rhodes at 1 p.m. with the Trader's Edge, Dave White at 2 p.m. with the Power Trading Hour, and Tom O'Brien anchors the daily lineup from 3 till 5 as host of the Tom O'Brien Show. Tune in to TFNN's Tiger TV on your computer or mobile device, and you can always find us streaming on YouTube. TFNN.com, educating investors. Nico and I are just kind of going over the 12 easy ways to eat a more plant-based diet, really trying to see the fact that they're really pushing us. And we always say there's kind of an agenda behind it, folks. They're worried about the food supply, but let's go on. What Number was nine. this? Number nine. Number nine. Load up your pancake and waffle batter. You know, in Holland, they have this nice pancake that my mother used to make. It was great, and, of course, everything was from scratch. Using these batter mixes and stuff is really the wrong way. And you have to probably eat a lot of them to, um, it says, uh, yeah, if you're hungry enough to, uh, to miss your bacon and eggs. A uh, little bacon and a little eggs. Yeah. That's a lot less of food than uh, eating right. waffles. Right. But see how they're kind of suggesting that the animal-based way is the wrong way? Yeah. It's very disconcerting. Finally, embrace your beans. 
Beans are a magical ingredient. Yeah, I mean, remember that song, beans, beans, good for your heart, the more you eat, the yeah. more you fart. Uh, well, beans are great because they saved a lot of people's lives in a lot of different ways. Of course, a new world food, so Europeans, hard to digest. Uh, mm -hmm. If uh, And they, when they were brought back, they quickly learned you had to soak these things, maybe let them sprout a little bit, and then they're much easier on your body. Well, you know what Dr. Marshall always said, eat some refried beans mm -hmm. because of the sulfur content, yeah. like once a week. Mm -hmm. But what's refried beans? Yeah. Cooked and cooked, cooked and double cooked. cooked. Exactly. exactly. Uh, number three, use applesauce instead of eggs. And when I first saw this, I, I was imagining applesauce frying next to my bacon. And I thought, boy, that's, but they're no, actually they're talking thinking. about using it as a binder and yeah. baking. Yeah. I've heard of that. And then finally, rethinking tofu. Well, soy is not a toy for the girl or the boy. So if you go to some of these uh, older countries mm -hmm. like uh, Korea and Japan and China and the way they use soil, at least traditionally, then you find out it's a whole different thing because they yeah. soak it in the salt fermented. water. They're using fermented. They're using tempeh. Exactly. They're not really using And it takes a long process. So you, you think people uh, are thinking way ahead when you're thinking about tofu and putting it in a vat for eight years. I mean, that's really forward thinking. And there must be a very, very important reason that these people went to all this trouble while here in America, we're just taking the tofu and we start eating it. Now, boy, are we ever healthy. It's an insane <laughs> world. It is. Why not look to the traditions? And what the CEOs of these companies are really trying to do is wipe away all the traditions so they control the foods because when they control the foods, they control the whole population. And if we don't have the knowledge of how we were supposed to eat or how we ate to get where we came, we're in big trouble, folks. Yeah. Thanks for sticking around, folks. We'll be back next week. Have a great day.